living the RB life versus renting a home. I want to talk to you about this just for a second because I had a few people ask me about it. And now that I'm back into a home situation, I've been living the RV life for over three years. Um, a few things that I have noticed and that I think that is, you know, positives and negatives is in the RV life, you only have one payment if you got a lot, you know. Say your lot is $700 a month. Uh, you only got that one payment. That's your lights, water, the people come around, they keep the maintenance clean up. You know, uh, you don't have to do no mowing, uh, upkeep, or nothing like that. And you have amenities. Uh, versus owning or renting a home, you know, you have to, you know, keep up with the landlord, normally take care of the major stuff, but you have to keep up the lawn. You have a couple extra bills. Say if your rent is $700, you might have a water bill and a light bill now. You know, a lot a water bill, light bill, and gas bill, which is actually what I have now, water bill, light bill, and gas. Now, as far as the upsides of that, uh, I have a, a bigger space. So I have a garage now, which I can actually do fabrication, and I can come up with a few products, and I can do some things from home. But my main reason for moving was to get more visitation rights for my son. So that's literally why I moved. Like, I would have stayed in the RV life, but having kids, especially getting them able to visit them, I needed to have a stable environment for them to come to and my daughter. Uh, so that way, you know, I could have more time with them and get set up. So it cost me a little bit more getting involved in it, <clears throat> getting back involved in it. But I know it's going to be worth it in the long time, you know, in the long run. So my goal is to be here until my son graduates. Honestly, I'm in Oklahoma City now, so uh, I went from Phoenix, Arizona, to Oklahoma City. It's a lot slower here, um, but uh, like I say, as far as the RV life, man, I enjoyed every bit of it. Uh, there was some negative things, you know, which you know you want to face regardless, you know. So to my African American, my black man, and, and black families that travel, um, I will always like to say, like I said before the video, to always call before before you go to the location. Um, to always, you know, get them a feel of who you are, pay for things up front. It's always better to do that if you're not boondocking, you know, just going to certain spots. Always call beforehand. Always. Uh, you you want to reserve your spots. You just don't want to pull up because people, you know, we pe everybody's different. So I just don't want to get you, I don't want you to get your family in a spot and and you get in a bind or you need to, you know, stop and then people act certain ways because I faced it, you know what I mean? And um, there was times, like I say, where literally when we was looking for a stable spot to go and even move our RV to another spot. <clears throat> Let me tell you this, because at first I was thinking about keeping my RV for a second and moving it to Oklahoma City, but all the nice spots that I really wanted to go to, um, they didn't really give me no um, racist stuff. I mean, honestly, I didn't really, they just gave price, but majority of them was, um, a lot of them had, uh, age limits. So you have to think about that. Even though you might buy a used RV and the RV might be up to par and everything is good. You still want to check on the, um, the limits of the years that they have in different RV parks. Like you might can't have nothing that's past 10 years old due to the present year or five years old you know some of them they only want you to have a certain type of look you know they want you to it's crazy because it's almost like they want you to be in debt or you know they want you to have a real nice rv before you come up you know like oh we want nothing but nice rvs which is nothing wrong with it but you just need to know that when you're traveling because it can be a headache, man. I mean, it is what it is. But versus, like I say, owning a home now or renting a home now, um, the freedoms was not having to worry about certain maintenance things, but you still have to do to keep up on your personal RV. So, you know, that was a gift. Some things are going to break down over time. You're going to replace things because you're using them all the time. Most RVs are actually made to use temporary, but you do have... Uh, four seasonal. So if you're going to buy one, I will make sure that you look into a four seasonal RV. You know, that way, you know, you get to something that's well insulated, well traveled until you figure it out. Um, my goal uh, actually is to find some land here and build a container home. Um, I specialize in uh, container modification. So hopefully I'm going to be bringing you some updates on that once I get that going. But my first goal here is to have a container uh, shop here. So I'm going to 
about to start that, but uh, the RV life was great, man. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the benefits of, of just learning it, man, the freedom of it uh, to just, I'm going to tell you one thing that I really like that I can just pack up and go and my whole home is with me. You know what I mean? Like, I love that fact because, you know, with things going on in the world right now, you know, sometimes you need to be able to just pack up and go. And um, due to only having a year lease, that's fine with me because it's still flexible with moving around and figuring out what I want to do. You know what I mean? So that's cool. But I would say this, man, uh, for those who enjoy the RV life, be safe, um, do your research. And uh, to me personally, uh, owning an RV, getting a good RV versus buying a home, to me, it's a no-brainer. I would do it again. I'm going to do it again or at least have a container home. But I love the RV. I like the fact that I can travel with it and have all my things and just go. So for a man personally, you know, for a small family, and if you really want to enjoy the our U.S. backyard is what I call it, you know, I haven't been overseas yet, but I haven't visited every state yet. So I want to visit every state and see what's in our backyard. So that's a cool thing about the RV life, man. You can be able to just pack up and go. I think that's an asset, um, you know, not necessarily being tied down. Um, but like I say, being here now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to kill a couple birds with one stone because I'm here for my son. Like literally, I got more visitation rights. I can see him more and I just couldn't risk not being around him and giving him what I didn't have, you know, giving him that guidance that I didn't have. I don't even want him taking that same route. And I think that's as a father, man, you, you, you should want your child to actually live better than you, uh, not just financially, but, you know, morally and, and physically and, and spiritually, you know what I'm saying? And, and psychologically, you want your your seed to be in a better situation. So that's literally why uh, I had to leave the RV life and why I'm in Oklahoma City right now. But just a few tips, man, I would say that, you know, it was good to be cautious on the road, uh, be aware, um, don't be naive, and just uh, get some of the things you need, man. Uh, like I say, there's a lot of YouTube videos that tells you about different tools and things that you can get that could actually help you um, on your preventative maintenance when you maintenance in your RV or the vehicle that you're using or if you got the RV that you drive or whatever it is you got. Um, there's many tips and tricks you can use to get things off the ground. So just on a personal note, I would say those who want to jump into the RV life, give it a shot, man. Give it a try. It's not for everybody, but for those that it is for, man, you're going to have a good time. I know I did. Hold on.